Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here in person at a live physical event with real people. Of course, it's a hybrid event, great stuff online. Check it out on the Amazon site as well as theCUBE Zone. We've got great guests talking about the cloud vision for getting talent into the marketplace, in being productive, and for society at Accenture, always great content. Denise Reese, Managing Director of the South Market Unit Lead at Accenture. AABG, which stands for the Accenture AWS Business Group, and Gina Fratacangeli, who's also the Managing Director of Midwest Sales Leader. Ladies, thanks for coming on. Appreciate you coming on, talking about the vision of talent. Yes. Thanks for having us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. So, Amazon's got this audacious goal to, to train 29 million people. Maureen Lonergan came on yesterday, who I've known for a long time, doing a great job. It's hard to get the talent in. Okay, first of all, I mean, it sounds harder than it really is, and that's my opinion, but you, know, you get some training certifications, you're up and running. <laughs> so tell us a big thing. What are you guys doing? Give us the, give us the overview. Sure. Well, we're having a lot of activity at Accenture trying to get talent in. Across the entire country, we're spending a tremendous amount of effort to do that. A couple of critical things we're doing in the Midwest is bringing in and searching for different talent streams that we haven't typically done in the past. Uh, for instance, one thing that we're doing is we set up an apprentice program where we're reaching out into the market to find diff diverse talent who aren't coming through the critical normal college path and bringing folks in like that. Another, pro and we've got 12 hundred people that we've brought in that way, just in the Midwest, um, which has been a phenomenal new talent stream for us and supporting our inclusion and diversity. One of the other exciting things is what we call the Mom Project, where we're intentionally working with an organization called the Mom Project to bring women back into the workplace who may have left while they were taking care of their families and helping them get certified in all the new cloud technology and getting back, in, back to work. I love how you guys are going after this whole places that not everyone's looking at, because yeah. what I love about cloud is that it's a level up kind of opportunity where you don't really have to have that pedigree that, or that, that big, big school. Uh, of course, I went to a different school, so I have a little <laughs> chip on my shoulder. I didn't go to MIT, I was at Northeastern, but it's still a good school. <laughs> no, but I mean, you could really level up from anywhere. That's right. And the opportunities with cloud are so great. This is like a huge thing. No, I'm surprised no one knows about it. Yep. Absolutely, I would, uh, to add to that, so we've in the South, in, uh, in Georgia in particular, we've just launched an initiative with the Technical College System of Georgia and AWS, so it's a public-private partnership where we're actually helping to set the uh, curriculum for those students through, that are going through programs through the technical colleges. It's one of the largest parts of the University System of Georgia, and we're actually helping to frame uh, key, uh, uh, the curriculum and giving folks what they need. To your point, it is an opportunity to level up. It's a great way to get talent in non-traditional spaces. It helps us to achieve our inclusion and diversity roles, or goals rather, but then it also allows us to really continue to fill that pipeline with folks that we may not have had access to otherwise. Is there a best practice that you see developing uh, in the acquisition of talent and, or enticing people to come in um, because I was just economics. I have a, you know, Maureen was telling me that there was a person, she was unemployed and she got certified and she's making six figures. Yeah. Like, she's like, oh my God, this is great. So that's the cloud growth. Is there a way to entice people? Is there a pattern? Is it more economic? Is it more, hey, be part of something? What's the... Yeah. What's the data show? There's definitely a, a war for talent out there. And so, in this space, we continuously hear from our clients that they can't hire enough people. So, in, in the past, in the technology space, a lot of clients were hiring their own teams, and here they just can't get the skills fast enough. So, we're spending a tremendous amount of time being proactive. Uh, we started a women in cloud organization where we're proactively reaching out to the community to bring women in, let them know that we will help them get those certifications. Um, and partnering with organizations like Women in Cloud, which is a global organization to create new tunnel, new funnels of talent. You know, I think the women angle is great. The mom network coming out of the work, back into the workforce, because yeah. things change a lot. We were sure. talking about how Amazon just changed over the past five years. Yeah. Yeah. Now the, this architectural approach is changing, so that's cool. Also, we were involved in the Women in Data Science at a Stanford University. Awesome. They have that great symposium. This is power technical women. Yes. Right. And it's got a global following. So yeah. the women networks that are developing are phenomenal. Yep. So that's not just an Accenture thing. Right. That's yeah. outside of Accenture. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, I think it's a combination because I think we do a really good job inside of Accenture to create opportunities for women of various ethnicities, lived experiences, to be able to come together to network internally, but then also to pour some of that talent that they have into the communities where we, we live and we all do business as well. So I think I'm seeing definitely a, a, a two-pronged approach there. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I kind of will. Accenture's known as a pretty, well, well, known as a great firm. Yeah. So working at Accenture is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Does that scare people? Uh, because if you go work at Accenture, I mean, that's good pedigree right there. So like, yeah. so getting, when you're trying to get people coming into the cloud, do they get the Accenture mojo, or does it work for yeah. them, and can you share your experiences yeah. on that? I've been here five years, and uh, it's been a phenomenal ride for me. I really enjoyed the fact, having a female CEO, I think, and having a CEO who's so committed yeah. to diversity on all aspects, right? Her commitment is 50% uh, diversity parity by 2025 at every level of our organization, and that doesn't happen without really intentional yeah. efforts um, at the entry level and everywhere through the process to ensure that women are not only promoted, but really given the support network among all of our leaders and mentorship to be successful. And it's yep. it's not just words, it's something that we're really spending a lot of time doing with intention. Um, and, and that word is out in the space now. As women come in, they're loving it, and they're recruiting their other women into the organization and uh, diverse groups as well, is what I'm seeing. Yeah. yeah, no, and so I actually just started at Accenture in March, so I've been around eight months. I actually joined from AWS, interestingly enough. And I can tell you from my own experience, the intentionality that Gina spoke to is it's evident at all levels. Um, I feel like the way that I was courted to the firm uh, was nothing short of amazing. That's another story for another day. But I feel like my being where I am, being hired in as a managing director, as an experienced hire, I think my presence is a testament to the focus that Accenture has on inclusion, diversity, and the equity component as well. And then also in Atlanta, we are exceptionally fortunate we have close to 30 uh, black and Latinx managing directors and senior managing directors out of the Atlanta office. So what we're doing there is pretty magical and it's something that I've never experienced in my 25 years. It's yeah. contagious, I hope, but magic is contagious. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And it's exciting because we're known as a management consulting yeah. business, right? So our, our product is the people. That's right. And so there is yeah. intention from day one as to what you want from your career and setting your career plan. So everyone is, is given those career counselors and the expectation that someone is thinking about your business and your personal business yes. and what is your role today and what should your role be in two years and what skills do you need to get there, yeah, which I is mean, awesome. It's a lot of fun. Well, yeah. It's also walking the talk too, right? I mean, yeah, that's Amazon right. here, they had 50% uh, women on stage. I don't know if you noticed, on the keynote, there was two men and two women, yeah, 50%. Yeah. Of course, the, the United Airlines was, it's got to be three, we got to get a 51%, because it's, it's technically 51%, so it should be three to one. But yeah, like, okay, that would skew the numbers a bit, that's good. Um, but this is real, I mean, and I'm a big proponent of software development. Yeah. The customers are women too, that's 51%. That's right. So I think this whole representation thing has to be more real. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and more intentional. That's right. And so I, th I want to ask you, how do you take, how would you share the best practice of making that real from the Accenture playbook? What could people learn and what mistakes should they avoid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think people who do want to try with it, I think they don't, don't know what to do. Right? Yeah, you know, I think get started, right? Do the work. You know, there's, um, I feel like since I started in technology, we've been having this conversation about diversity and inclusion and bringing more people into the space. And now it's time for us to just do that. And I feel like Accenture is doing that in spades. I think also, again, I, I've been using this word, I was on a breakout panel yesterday talking about our partnership with AWS and intentionality keeps coming up, but I think also it helps to have a CEO who's creating diversity as an imperative at the most senior levels of the firm, and folks are being incentivized as a result. So you've got to put the mechanisms in place yeah. to ensure that folks un understand that this is not just lip service. You know, right. that, that's a great point. It's not only just the people, yes. the mechanisms. And one of the things that I've been saying early on in the top of the interview was, cloud is a level, le instant leveler because it's, you can be so capable so fast. Yes, yeah. And so like when you start thinking about getting people in the market, producing talent, right. this notion of meritocracy isn't lip service. Yeah. Right. Because if you have the capabilities, 
and the people side line up, right. then it truly can be like that. Right. Because you, your game does the talking. Right, yes. and we're, we're doing it with intention at every level in the organization, so much so that every, every leader, every people leader, one of their metrics is the diversity. And as we look at the promotions, making sure that that parity is there, but every person who's managing people has diversity as a metric that they're being measured on. And so I think that's really critical, as well as having the people who are being the advocates and being the allies, right. and really asking the questions as the teams are getting put together, you know, my job is to review all the deals in the Midwest, and when the teams come forward, I say, great, where are the women on the team? Who are we putting? We're all talking about the diversity, so when we're going to a client meeting, where are the women who you're taking to that meeting? And if the answer is, well, there's not one who's technical yet, or the most senior, or the most technical, well, great, bring her on and use this as a training opportunity. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk, we need to walk the walk and talk the talk and, and oh. show that to our clients. I think that's really good. You guys as senior leaders, one, can do that and demonstrate that, but also also, you're in the field for Accenture. You're in front of yes. your customers. What are you seeing out there and what excites you about being in this industry? Yeah, I love the fact that there are so many more women in the space. Um, I love that we're having so many women out there with intention. We've had six female CIOs do women in cloud uh, panel discussions with us and with our team. So you, you made the comment earlier about cloud moving so fast. That's the most exciting thing for me. And the fact that it is moving at such a, at a pace that no one client is going to be able to get the skills fast enough. Yeah. They need companies like Accenture, they need companies like AWS, to help them, where we're leveraging all the knowledge from our own other clients and bringing that together so we can help them accelerate their development. What about Absolutely. you? Absolutely. No, I would echo that, as we used to say at AWS, plus one to that. Um, but I, I, I'm really hopeful because what I'm seeing is the number of folks with my lived experience that are at senior, at le senior executive levels, not only within Accenture and AWS, but in our customers. And I think going back to the point that we made, you were making earlier, regarding um, cloud being a level up and giving, giving folks opportunity, folks have to be able to see a path, right? It's one thing to just get a certification and and tick a box, that's great. But if you don't see a pathway to being able to utilize that in a way that allows you to move up, and seeing where we are now, um, just as a firm, just really, really excites me. Every time I get onto a call and I see another strong, amazing woman, I just, I'm like, man, this is amazing. And it has, it's something that, I think it's a phenomenon that I've started to see maybe within the last like five years or so, and probably even within the last two to three years, I've started to see that even more so. So that really excites me. Well, well, first of all, you guys are great. You're contagious, okay, <laughs> which is good, a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're good to and, yes. And just, I love how you brought up the whole path thing because Pathfinders was a big part of Adam Celeste's keynote. Yeah. And it, and it must right. be really fun to see people taking the path that you guys are, are pioneering. And we're yes. plowing. We're yes, plowing. we are. We're plowing. <laughs> and you know what else we're doing? We're lifting as we're yes. we're yeah. lifting as we climb. Yeah. That is important. You've got to be, it's I always say that you know we don't have all of these amazing opportunities and blessings just to talk about what we have. Yeah. But if you're not actually bringing somebody else along and giving those opportunities to folks, then it's it's all for naught. You've so. got people and the cloud. Yeah. Yes. Some people, which is we're humans, and yes. the mechanisms that's software right. that's that bring right. it together, magic. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for, for having us. Okay, yeah. this is the Cube. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. You're watching the Cube, the leader in global tech coverage from Reinvent 2021 AWS Web Services. Thanks for watching.